this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I offer an update on the case of Courtney Clenny? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing by this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoy this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I'll put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. First, I'll look at the background of this case, move to the timeline of the alleged crime, then offer my analysis. Courtney Clenny was born on April 21, 1996, and grew up in Austin, Texas. Her father, Kim, worked as a financial advisor and earned quite a bit of money. Courtney's mother is named Deborah, and she has one sister named Morgan. Courtney was very active in athletic activities in school. She played a number of sports and lifted weights. Eventually, she noticed that she was attracting a lot of attention with photographs of herself that she posted on social media. She decided to become a social media influencer under the name Courtney Taylor. She posted images on Instagram and became very popular on the platform, eventually reaching 2 million followers. Courtney decided to start an OnlyFans account. This is a platform that has a reputation for attracting content creators who want to restrict their use of clothing. Courtney earned a lot of money as a social media influencer. In 2020, she earned almost a million dollars. In 2021, about $1.8 million. In November 2020, Courtney became romantically involved with a man named Christian Obamselli. Christian, who sometimes went by the name Toby, was a cryptocurrency trader, which is sometimes used as a euphemism for being unemployed. Christian had been born on April 12, 1994. He was two years older than Courtney. He became Courtney's personal assistant and helped her to grow her social media empire. The romantic relationship was tumultuous from the very beginning and involved multiple incidents of domestic violence from both sides. In July 2021, Courtney was arrested for domestic battery against Christian in a Las Vegas hotel. On October 8, 2021, Courtney stabbed Christian in the leg with a knife. In January of 2022, Courtney and Christian moved into a high-rise condominium in Miami, Florida. The unit had three bedrooms and three bathrooms. It was considered fairly luxurious. The neighbors would complain about domestic violence incidents. Some of the complaints came from tenants who were two floors above where Courtney lived. The management of the building started legal action to evict Courtney and Christian from the condominium. On January 30, 2022, Courtney cut Christian's face with a knife. In February 2022, Courtney attacked Christian in one of the building's elevators. In March, Courtney kicked Christian out of the condominium. Christian moved back into the condominium on April 1, 2022, and the police were called to the building either that same day or the next day. Depending on the source that is used, legal documents say April 1, but the body camera video indicates April 2. Courtney appeared to be upset as she desperately pleaded with the police in the lobby of the building. There were different stories about what happened, but it was clear that there was some type of argument between Courtney and Christian. This takes us to the timeline of the alleged crime. On Sunday, April 3, 2022, Courtney and Christian were in their condominium. Christian left the residence at 1.15 p.m., Courtney called Christian at 4.01 p.m. and again at 4.33 p.m. Between these two times, she uploaded an Instagram Live video to her account. At the end of the Instagram video, she told her viewers that she would be live again that night. But as it turns out, she had something more stabbing-related in mind. Christian arrived back at the condominium right as Courtney called for the second time, the call at 4.33 p.m., Sometime between 4.43 p.m. and 4.57 p.m., Courtney stabbed Christian in the chest with a knife. Building security called 911 at 4.56 p.m. to report a disturbance. At 4.57 p.m., Courtney called 911 and told them that Christian was suffering from a stab wound and needed assistance. She can be heard on the call saying, I am so sorry, baby. When the police entered the apartment, they found that Courtney was holding Christian. They were both covered in blood. There was blood all over the apartment, as if Christian had moved around quite a bit after being stabbed. 
Christian was transported to a nearby hospital, but he did not survive. An autopsy showed that the knife had entered Christian's chest at a slight downward angle and penetrated to a depth of eight centimeters. The manner of death was ruled homicide. Eventually, Courtney was charged with second-degree murder with a deadly weapon. If convicted, she is facing 16.75 years in prison, all the way up to life in prison. Now moving to my analysis. Before evaluating the strength of the case against Courtney, let's take a look at a few items that may provide context. Item number one, there's no question that the physical violence in the relationship between Courtney and Christian went both ways. Both of them had played the role of the aggressor and the victim. The couple had broken up and reunited several times. The relationship was volatile and destructive. Courtney had used a knife to attack Christian on at least two prior occasions, in October 2021 and February 2022. For some reason, Christian desperately wanted to stay in a romantic relationship with Courtney. He viewed the relationship as special and almost magical. It would appear that Christian was rationalizing Courtney's bad behavior. He interpreted her frequent attacks as coming from a place of love, while simultaneously being concerned that he may be seriously injured or killed. Courtney appeared to be insecure and jealous. She wanted to monitor Christian's whereabouts and was concerned that he was entertaining other love interests. Item number two, in addition to law enforcement contacts involving alleged violence, Courtney had some run-ins involving alcohol. She was sentenced to three days in jail for a DWI, which occurred in 2015. She was charged again after crashing her Mercedes-Benz into another vehicle on September 16, 2020. The police found a bottle of tequila in the front seat of the Mercedes. Courtney's blood alcohol content was over three times the legal limit. Item number three. As part of the discovery phase in the murder case against Courtney, a few cell phone recordings were introduced into evidence. It does not appear as though Courtney was aware that the recordings were being made. These recordings captured Courtney berating Christian. In one video, which appears to have been recorded inside the couple's condominium, Courtney can be heard demanding that Christian locate her cell phone and yelling at him for talking to another woman. Here are a few of the statements that Courtney made that were captured on the recording. Quote, shut up and let me blank slap you blank, unquote. Quote, find my blank phone and charge it, unquote. When referring to the woman Christian talked to, Courtney said, quote, you always wanted to blank her, unquote. Courtney then went on to use a racial slur. In another recording, Courtney said, quote, decide whether or not you're done gaslighting me, unquote. Christian responds, quote, I apologize, but you hit me, unquote. Courtney whispers, quote, shut the blank up, blank, don't like say that, unquote. These recordings make it seem as though Christian wanted to document Courtney's bad behavior. Courtney probably whispered because she was aware of her own guilt and wanted to escape responsibility. Item number four, during the incident that occurred either one or two days before the fatal stabbing, when the police were called to the condominium building where Courtney and Christian lived, it appears as though Courtney did not want the police to be involved, but then she changed her story to make it look like she did want them there. One building employee said that Courtney had shoved Christian out of an elevator. Another employee said that Christian had charged Courtney in the lobby. So we see one story makes Courtney look like the aggressor, and the other story makes Christian look like the aggressor. It's not clear who was at fault. Perhaps both of them were at fault. The body camera video of Courtney's interactions with the police that day indicate that she was not sophisticated at manipulating people, but she believed in her own abilities nonetheless. She was desperately trying to convince the police by acting dramatically, but she did not have the manipulation skills necessary to accomplish that goal. Item number five, after mortally wounding Christian, Courtney supplied the police with inconsistent accounts regarding the incident. She said that Christian shoved her against a wall by the neck and threw her to the ground. Therefore, she armed herself with a knife. She was over 10 feet away from Christian and threw the knife at him. This is how he was mortally wounded. So she threw the knife through the air and it penetrated his chest 
a depth of eight centimeters. During the interview, Courtney demonstrated how she threw the knife. Based on how little force she used, it would be surprising if the knife would have even traveled 10 feet, much less penetrated Christian's chest. At one point, when talking about her behavior, Courtney said, quote, I really don't know if all this was justified at all, unquote. The state has argued that there is no way that the wound was caused by a knife being thrown through the air. It would have taken at least 12 pounds of pressure to push the knife into his chest. The state dismissed Courtney's argument that maybe the knife was accidentally pushed in after it was thrown into Christian's chest. Like neither Courtney nor Christian could figure out what to do upon seeing the knife sticking out of Christian's chest, and they thought to themselves, maybe we should push that in further. Item number six. Courtney had bruises on her body after the fatal incident, but reportedly not on her neck. According to her version of events, Christian had pushed her on the neck. This doesn't look too good for Courtney's case. Item number seven, during the time frame when the stabbing occurred, Courtney was on the phone with her mother, Deborah Clenny. Deborah did not mention anything to the police about Christian being threatening. However, she did hear yelling and heard Courtney telling Christian, to leave. Moving to the next question, is Courtney guilty of murder beyond a reasonable doubt? Let's take a look at the evidence both for and against the idea that Courtney is guilty, starting with the inculpatory factors. There is no doubt that Christian died of a single stab wound delivered by Courtney. The knife was not thrown. Therefore, Courtney was lying about what happened. There was a history of domestic violence between Courtney and Christian. Courtney was the aggressor at least some of the time. She appeared to be extremely jealous, impulsive, and violent. Courtney's mother, Deborah, was on the phone with Courtney during the incident, but made no mention of Christian making a threat. Moving to the exculpatory evidence, one neighbor claimed that he saw Christian swinging at Courtney a week before Christian died. According to Courtney's attorney, there are witnesses who observed Christian being harmful toward Courtney. He was manipulative and narcissistic, he was able to maintain a positive public image, but in private, he was destructive. Christian may have demonstrated stalking behavior in the weeks leading up to his death. On prior occasions when the police were called to the couple's condominium, Courtney had bruises on her arms and legs. Courtney's mother, Deborah, heard Courtney tell Christian to leave the condominium during the argument. When considering all the evidence that is available at this point, do I think that Courtney Clenny is guilty of murder? When I first reviewed this case, I was not convinced beyond a reasonable doubt based on the little evidence that was available to the public. After examining the evidence that has been released since then, I believe that Courtney is guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. I do not believe that Courtney intended to kill Christian, but of course her actions caused his death. I think for Courtney this was just another knife attack like those she conducted before. She probably thought that everything would work out fine. If Christian was refusing to leave the condominium, that did not give Courtney the right to use lethal force. For one thing, Christian wasn't threatening her. For another, he was a resident of the condominium. She could have simply left. Moving to the last question, what do I think happened in this case? This is just a theory, my opinion. Courtney made a living by presenting herself as the physical ideal, who was attractive to a large number of men. She did not have any talent, outside of photographing herself and putting the images on social media. Significant popularity and profound financial achievements came very easily to Courtney. Her success was so effortless that it fed into her sense of entitlement, grandiosity, and arrogance. She believed that she deserved success. She viewed herself as important and special. When Courtney met Christian, he started to believe this as well. He even worked as her assistant. Courtney had all the power in the relationship due to her fame, money, and attractiveness. Christian was desperate to remain with her, as he indicated in several messages that he sent to Courtney. In one message, he referred to the question, is love going to kill me? Christian noted that to be with Courtney, he had sacrificed his pride and recognized that she would always get her way. It's clear that Christian was just trying to rationalize all the suffering at Courtney's hands. He needed to find some other explanation outside of the obvious one. Namely, Courtney was dangerous and would eventually kill him. 
Courtney was not sophisticated at manipulating people, but she had complete control over Christian. His willingness to endure just about any harm and his low self-esteem combined to make him a highly vulnerable victim. In addition, Christian exhibited some stalking behavior, which allowed Courtney to justify her aggressive actions, at least in her own mind. Courtney and Christian may have hurt each other, but Courtney was at fault more often and was dominant. Even with Christian being patient, Courtney's demands could not be satisfied. She was becoming increasingly erratic, aggressive, and jealous. In what probably should have been just another violent encounter where Christian was injured, Courtney managed to kill him. She achieved the ultimate level of domination. Courtney spoke to the police and did not even try to make up a good lie. Such was her confidence in her ability to manipulate men. That's my update on the case of Courtney Clenny. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comments section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be informative. Thanks for watching.